Hey, what's going on, guys, and welcome to the Cornerstone Builder. My name is Josh Donnelly, and in today's episode, we are going to take a look at a use case for Cornerstone's new Get and Set cookie feature. Now, the best part about this feature is that it is fully native inside of Cornerstone's dynamic content. You can set a cookie for a user, and then you can retrieve that cookie for a user. Now, there are plenty of use cases for setting and getting cookies, and you could use these in many different creative ways. And so in today's video, we are going to take a look at how to create content gating without the need for any third-party plugins. But then in addition to that, we'll take a look at how to daisy chain this to something like Gravity Forms to allow somebody to enter their email address to then get access to a page on your site. So without further ado, let's dive in. Now, as you may recall, in one of our previous videos, we set up a custom post type called documents. And within this custom post type called documents, we created an archive page, which is this one here. We currently only have one document in there. And then when we click on document one, we created a single layout page for our document as well, which has a title, it has a short description, it has a button that allows you to download this PDF document, and then we also also tapped into a PDF preview plugin that allows us to view that here. So for the sake of this example, let's say that we have several of these documents and we want to create a content gate. So we want people to be able to freely view them, but only after they've taken some action that we require on the site. Well, first we need to lock down the document. So let's create a couple more documents here just so we can see this example in action. So we'll go ahead and create document two and we'll publish and we'll create document three and we'll publish and now when we jump back out to our archive let's go ahead and look at this here we have all three of our documents listed out there so this is a great start now if i go ahead and open up an incognito window here and I jump into that documents page, I can see all of the documents listed. But I'm also incognito and I can click on document two and I have full access to document two. And that's not really what we want. So let's go ahead and jump back into Cornerstone here and talk about how we would lock things down. Now we know we do want people to have access to the archive because this is kind of where we're advertising what documents that they could have access to. But what we want to do is jump into the single document layout and we want to come up with a lock screen. So let's come up here and we'll add a section. And I'm just going to duplicate our headline one here and add a div. So here we'll put headline one in here and this will say, sorry, comma, you cannot access this yet, right? So that's just for now, that's how we're going to gate this. Now, just to make sure that you're following along, if I go ahead and I save this as is, and I go into one of our documents, you're going to see both of those things. You're going to see our section up top that you can't access this and the headline for document two. Well, that's not good. So let's go jump back to our single layout. So within section one, we are going to come over to the customize tab and we're going to jump down to our conditions here and we are going to add a new condition group. Inside of this condition group, we are going to change the first part of our condition to string and then we're going to open up our dynamic content. And inside of here, we're going to search for cookie. And you'll notice we now have two options for getting a cookie and setting a cookie. Now we're working at this a little bit backwards because I wanted you to see sort of the building blocks of things here. So we're gonna get the cookie even though we haven't even set the cookie yet. So we're gonna click get cookie and determine what the cookie's name is that we're going to retrieve. Let's just call that document access cookie. And we'll need to remember that because everything will need to align with that. So we're going to say in this condition that if document access cookie is not active so that's our value that we're going to put in there then show this top part then in section two here we're going to come into customize and do the same thing we'll go into conditions here add a new condition group select string and then in here i'm going to open up my dynamic content again and i'm going to type in cookie and we're going to get a cookie and the cookie we want to get is our document access cookie we're going to add that in and this time we want to show section two when document access cookie in the user's browser is set to active. And you'll notice right away, even in the Cornerstone preview here, it's no longer showing me section two because I don't have that cookie active. Now, if I needed to continue working on it, I can come up here to my preview window and say, ignore element conditions. And then I can see my section two while I work on it. But we're gonna go ahead and turn that off just so you can kind of see everything coming together here. So now if I jump out to document two here and I refresh, it's going to just show me that I cannot access this document yet. So I need a cookie. 
So now let's talk about how we set that document access cookie. Let's come in here and we're just gonna add a new page for now. And again, I'm gonna show you how you can tie all of this together. But in this new page, let's just call this document access page and we'll set this to publish. Now on this page, let's go ahead and just add a little bit of language. We'll come in here and add a div. And then inside of that div, we'll add a headline. And this headline might say something like, congratulations, here's your cookie. All right, cool. Let's make that a little bigger for this video here. Boom, all right, congratulations, here's your cookie. But if I jump out to that page, so here we are, congratulations, here's your cookie. And now I jump back to document two and I refresh, I still can't access the page. That's because we haven't actually set the cookie. So let's jump back into our document access page and we can really add this anywhere. You could add it directly inside of this headline, but I am going to add it into a raw element directly below our headline. And nobody's gonna see this on the front end, but this is where we're cooking the user. So we're gonna come into our dynamic content we're gonna type in cookie again, but this time, instead of getting a cookie, this is where we are setting the cookie in the user's browser. So we're gonna click set cookie, and we need a name for this cookie. Well, it's gotta match the name that we're using throughout our setup here, so that was document access cookie. And then the value we want here, remember we said show the document if the value of the cookie is set to active. So we want to set this cookie for the user with the value active so they can view the documents. You can choose an expiration window here. So we could say this expires in one month. We choose a path. So you could specify that this cookie is only good on a certain page path, but I'm just gonna go ahead and leave this default here. So it's good across my website. And then you could specify the domain name that this is good for, but I'm gonna leave this as default as well. And we'll simply add this in here. So right away, you'll notice we have our cookie set with the name document access cookie and a value of active. And I think that's looking pretty good. So now I'm gonna save that and I am going to view the document access page on the front end. Now the problem is as soon as I'm viewing this, I'm already getting the cookie, so it's kind of hard to test this out. So here's what we're gonna do. From this page, let's go ahead and go into inspect here. And we're gonna jump over to application in Chrome. You'll notice that we have cookies and under cookies, we have the domain that we're currently on. And if I scroll down, you'll notice right around here in the middle, I have my document access token with the value of active. I'm gonna go ahead and delete that momentarily. Now let's go ahead and close this out and we're gonna go back to documents. Now, if you're noticing any wonkiness with this, so let's go ahead and select one of these and see if I have access to it. You'll notice that it does say that I can't access it. But if you're noticing any wonkiness with the cookieing and getting access, you may need to exclude this from your cache. And so to do that on something like SiteGround, I can do it simply from the back end here. I can go into the speed optimizer caching inside of SiteGround and directly within the caching, I can exclude post types from caching and simply find our documents post type here and confirm. And now that post type is being excluded from the cache, ensuring that the conditional logic is read and met each time. So let's go ahead and jump back over to our documents archive and click on document three. You'll notice that we do not have access, but if in our URL, we go to the document access page and click, as soon as this page loads, you'll notice that we do now have application cookies and right here, we have our document access cookie, which means now when I go back to documents and I click on document three, it's checking that I have this cookie active and it is showing me what is on that page. So there we go. We have content gating. So if you do not have the cookie, you cannot see the document, but if you visit this page, we give you the cookie and now you can view the document. And the nice thing is because it's a cookie, I can go back and I can go to document one and it already knows that I have the cookie. So I don't have to visit the page every time or fill out a form every time. As soon as I have the cookie, I can view these documents. So you could be running a campaign. You could send people to a welcome page where they receive the cookie and then they would have access to whatever you are providing access to. 
So let's say we wanted to go about this the traditional route where somebody simply enters in their email address for some sort of lead form and then they have access to your content. Well, we can actually use this exact same setup that we have here, but we are going to direct the user to this congratulations page or this thank you page or whatever this might be through Gravity Forms. So we're gonna jump over to the back end of the site here. We'll go into Forms. We'll create a new form here. So let's click Add New and we'll do a blank form. We'll call this this document gating form and go ahead and create a blank form. We're going to keep this super low friction. So we are only going to require an email address, which we'll drag out right here. And then we'll go ahead and click on our submit button. And we want the submit button to fall in line. So we'll just say end of the last row. And maybe we do fill container or something like that. So we'll go ahead and save that form. Now let's jump back into Cornerstone here. And in our single document form where we have our gating section, let's go ahead and enable ignore element conditions here. Now we can see our gating section up here. Inside of that section, let's go ahead and add our form integration element here and inside of our form integration element we're going to choose gravity forms and then inside of gravity forms we are going to choose document gating form and immediately that adds our fields now what we're going to do is jump back over here and under settings we're going to go into confirmations and under confirmations instead of a text confirmation we are going to redirect to a page here and the page we want to redirect to is our document access page so let's go ahead and click on that and click Save Confirmation. Now, when I go to a page like this, let's refresh and see if we have access. So we do. So let's get rid of our access. So I'm gonna come over here. I'm gonna go into Application, and I'm going to delete my document access cookie. Now, when I refresh this page, there we have our form. Now, if I come in here and I type in test at test.com, and I click Submit, this directs me to our cookie page where I just got cookied. And now if I go back to documents and I click on document three, I now have access. So to streamline that process, we can now jump over to our document access page. We could add a button in here. Let's go ahead and add one of these. This button could say view documents and it would take you to forward slash documents in our case here. So now let's do this again. We're gonna come over to document three. We're gonna get rid of our cookie to see what this looks like. So we'll go ahead and delete this cookie and refresh. And here we are gated. We cannot view this document. In fact, if we go back to all documents and we go to document one, we can't view this one either. If we go to document two, we cannot view this one either. But if we come in here and we fill out this form, so we'll do test at test.com and we click submit, We've now received that cookie. We can then click on this button that we added in here, view documents. And now when I click document two, I can view it. If I go back and I click document three, I can view it. If I go back and I click document one, I can view it. And just like that, you've seen how to natively set a cookie and get a cookie within Cornerstone to create some very intuitive, very simple content gating. As always, I hope you guys find these videos useful. I look forward to seeing how you implement these in your designs, and I will see you guys in the next video. Happy building.